All right, just a couple of notes about um, what I had to do to fix this. You can see here, uh, that's what it was. And then this is what I wanted to get rid of that gap there and to make these be full screen. So uh, a couple of things I had to play with here and I'm still not all that happy with it, to be honest, because look, when I do get it out, I would like the margin right here to be a little bit on the images that are the figure that's on the left. So I could play uh, even more with this, but uh, my effort was to get that padding away from it so that when it's at full screen, you don't have to see an indented image. And one of the things I had to fix was, first let me go to my HTML. Um, I replaced line six with this line. So this is my old, um, viewport tag. And because I downloaded this website from WordPress, it had this old tag. And I placed an article in this week's folder that you can read about this part, initial scale, which is kind of a new thing. It's something that um, Apple came up with and other uh, people have adopted. But this changes the way things are viewed. And then I had to go to my CSS. And I separated out content figure odd and content figure even. Oh, look, they're both odd. Let me just make that one even. Save. Um, and I added this too, but I think that was a problem that I was having, so I just fixed it. Save. Um, so by separating these two out of that, I was able to give them a margin zero. And I would probably even play with it a little more if I did one EM here. Remember, this would be top and bottom and this would be right and left. So let's take a look at that. So it has that top and bottom margin. And what I would want is on the, uh, this image, which is, oh my gosh, what is it? Uh, it's an even, so maybe I should put a margin right on the evens. Oh yeah, and that's what I had done at the bottom. But if you're, if you wanna use more than Oops, let me not change that. So if I took content figure even out of that and gave content figure even its own and said about it, what do I wanna say? Um, top and bottom, top one, right one, do I wanna say that? Really? That feels like a lot. Bottom one and left none. So let's save and look at that. So there, now that looks better, but how does it look? Yeah, not bad. And does that change? It doesn't change that and it doesn't change that. So yeah, you can work with this, right? You can work with these. And um, this is an old site, so I guess somebody who built it on WordPress built it a year, uh, year or two before initial scale became popular. And here on Brightspace, you'll see, um, I wrote about it, the, view, the viewport tag from last week. So the viewport tag is what we just added right up here in order to have a liquid layout. And if you want to read about it, you can. There's a lot of really interesting things in this article. Um, here are using viewport queries, which we've talked about. It's responsive web design. Let me just go back to that article. Um, and you can see that Apple introduced the viewport meta tag to Safari. But other browsers have uh, adopted it by now. And Apple's documentation is here if you're interested. And here's a story about how two um, different viewports work together. Uh, this is what I copied right here and pasted into my HTML up there. 
And as I said, I just did an HTML comment in front of and behind that. So this is it. Welcome to the world of web design, right? You're constantly backtracking and fixing and tweaking. And if you are a graphic designer as well as a web designer, you will find that this is something you spend a lot of time doing. In the same way that if you're a graphic designer using Adobe InDesign, you're going back and you're tweaking little things here and there. It's the profession of someone who is interested in being really picky about things. All right, that's enough for flexible cats, isn't it?